Welcome to the On The Edge podcast. I'm Stephanie Quayle, musician, songwriter, and mental health advocate. Throughout this season, I will be chronicling the behind the scenes of each song off my latest album, On The Edge. I hope each of these eight songs, these eight pieces of my heart, resonate with yours from the moment you heard them until the time you now hear the truth behind them. From betrayal to grief, to love and laughter, this story isn't just mine, it's ours. And I'm ready to take us on a journey of redemption to redefine ourselves through honest discovery. So borrow some courage until the courage becomes your own. And that's when you'll be ready to tell your truth. So buckle up, because sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. I'm Stephanie, and this is the On The Edge Podcast. I get asked all the time, how do I have so much energy? How do I do it all between the travel, early mornings, late night performances, and projects I'm working on at any given time? I'm gonna let you in on my greatest self-care secret, water. And no, not just the amount of water, it's the type of water. You've probably seen me carrying around a blue bottle. Well, enter Splendor Water. Splendor Water is a volcanic water source from the Andes Rainforest in La Mana, Ecuador. I've actually been to the source. I guess you could say I am source verified. What's wild about this water is that when it filters through the lava rocks of the Cotopaxi volcano, the water naturally picks up colloidal gold and silver minerals and other natural electrolytes our bodies need to stay truly hydrated. And when it comes to taste, nothing compares to Splendor. I crave it. I didn't realize how obsessed I was with the water until I didn't have access to it. Now I check a bag just to ensure I always have it with me. So if you're ready to increase hydration and energy, Splendor is offering only to the On The Edge listeners 15% off your first order with code EDGE15. That's 15% off your first order with EDGE15. Head to SplendorWater.com forward slash edge for all your ordering needs. Hydrate your soul by elevating your hydration. Pick up your Splendor Water today by heading to SplendorWater.com forward slash edge. Well, friend, here we are at the end of this part of our journey together. Can you even believe it? We've walked through the first seven songs from my album, On the Edge, And today, we are going to walk through song eight, the very last song on the album. This actually makes me very emotional to think about it. At this point, you know so much of my story. You've listened to the details of the hardest season of my life, the emotions I went through, and the transformation that was waiting for me on the other side. I hope this level of transparency has been a support for you for some of your hard times. And now I'd like to share one of the most memorable moments of this time of my life, which is the inspiration behind track number eight. It was only the day after his passing when my parents flew out to be by my side. They both hopped on a plane as soon as they could from Bozeman, Montana to get to me in Santa Monica, California. I'll tell you a bit more about the significance of that later in this episode, but no, this was pretty unprecedented for my parents. So it was the Thursday following the Wednesday after his tragic plane crash, only 24 hours after the accident, and my mom spoke words to me that I'll never forget. I was grieving. I was in shock. I was feeling everything and nothing all at the same time. And yet, despite it all, my sweet mom pulled me in wrapped her arms around me and said, I promise you, only good will come of this. At this time, even though she was being sweet and pure-hearted and it felt like she was getting a direct line from God, I was, I was in disbelief, almost mad at her for saying that. Did she understand the gravity of what had just happened? How could those words possibly be true? 
And I still didn't even know the rest of the story. I was just mourning the loss. Well, this is exactly what I'd like to chat with you about today. How true those words really are. So hang in there with me, friend. This will probably get emotional. I'm getting emotional just sharing this, but let this be something that you can hold on to, a mantra of sorts, even just for a little bit. No matter your circumstances, no matter how dire, remind yourself, only good will come of this. Only good will come of this, even though you can't see it. I know it feels like an endless bridge, you gotta walk alone. Keep your head up when you cry, till you get to the other side. Thank God that you're still alive, so start to live. Only good will come of this. Friend, welcome back to the very last episode of this season of the On The Edge podcast. Woo! I've already gotten emotional once. I'll see if I can keep it together for you for the rest of our time today. The emotions run high on this one because this song is just so close to my heart. And I hope soon it will be close to yours and be a helpmate whenever you need a friend to lean on. In our last episode, we walked through together the song, The Edge. That song is our battle cry, our anthem, our pump up. We turn this on all the way up while we're working out, or about to go out, kind of song. And in contrast, only good will come of this brings us back into our bodies and emotions. It's the sweet and sensitive friend that gently encourages us to keep going. It's the delicate reminder that there's so much good on the horizon. We just have to keep going. Even when what's right in front of us feels impossible. Like I said earlier, my parents both hopped on a flight together as soon as they could once I told them the news of my late boyfriend's accident. Now, there's great significance to this. And if you also come from a divorced family, you'll totally get it. My parents had been divorced since I was about three, and I think they were maybe in the same room for maybe my 21st birthday. So the fact that they got on the same flight, drove together to me, and walked up together to me to support me, it was not only unprecedented, but they knew how much I needed them. They put everything else aside. And their united support is something I will never forget. So there I was the Thursday after the Wednesday of this accident. My mom and I are just in my room, and I'm just trying to get through. And she just keeps repeating the words, only good will come of this. And I kept repeating to her, how can you know? How do you know? And she looked at me like only a mom can. And she says, I promise. But despite my pushback, she looked at me and she'd say it over and over again, not like a hammer, but gentle like a feather. Almost with more truth and surety each time. It was almost as if she was promising it to me. Like she just knew deep in her heart, this was true. Even if I couldn't see it yet, even if I couldn't feel it yet, and even if it was impossible to truly know yet. I was too exhausted and emotional to fight her. So we kept laying there on my bed, her arms wrapped around me, and she just listened to me. But when I went to sleep that night, Those words kept running through my head. And the next day, and the next day, and every day thereafter. Only good will come of this. I certainly didn't fully believe this yet. But there was something in my heart that grabbed onto the sentiment that night. And I would later see just how much it would carry me through. Now that's what I always say. When a stranger comes my way Carrying the heaviest weight They don't understand It ain't gonna dim the pain Or take all the hurt away But hope has a funny way Of lending a hand 
It wouldn't be until a few days later that I learned of my boyfriend's infidelities. As you know, that was an entirely other piece of shocking news to receive while in the middle of trying to wrap my head around his accident, mourning his death, grief, shock, and my whole world being flipped upside down. As I was processing all these new pieces of information, I kept going back to the words of my mother, Only good will come of this. My mom's words in my mom's most delicate, ferocious voice. And in the middle of all this awful, dark, and heart-shattering moments, the words of my mom brought just a touch of comfort that I knew I'd need to get through. These words have continued to ring through my healing journey, which... I think is one that's a lifelong journey. And defining what they mean to me has become a part of my life's goal, my life's journey. My mom had to have known they had so much purpose and so much reason and so much comfort in them. So I've also found purpose in them. And here's where I've landed so far on this mission of mine. And while my interpretation of this saying may change and evolve, as we do as humans with emotional experiences, I hope this finds you exactly where it needs to find you today. In this life, bad things will happen. You'll experience life-changing hard things. And when those things happen, we don't need to give those bad things a purpose with everything happens for a reason statement retroactively. And at the same time, I believe that it can be true that we can heal, that we can find pieces of good along the way. We can find the good in the hard. We can build endurance. We find that we are able to experience more joy as we experience more pain. We learn to navigate We don't build up a callus around our heart. We just have more understanding and empathy for others. We find that we are stronger than we knew we could be and that this will equip us to better serve others. We find the good along the way. Find that little bit of light in the dark. But I do believe my mom's sentiments which I feel came straight from God, give us a purpose to squeeze out any goodness that these hard times can bring. I think one of the biggest blessings was that I was able to share that message forward for years and years that followed, not only to myself, but to others that were struggling, even before the song was ever in creation, while I was just finding my way. So while it was hard to believe my mom at first, over time, these were words I clung to. It wasn't toxic positivity. It wasn't denying the pain of loss. But I repeated these words out loud when I couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. They were words and they are words that I cling to when I couldn't get out of bed. Or when the hurt, the betrayal seemed like simply more than I could bear. These were words that motivated me and continue to motivate me to intentionally find a small amount of goodness even in the days when it feels impossible. What is so extraordinary about being human is that we have the power to choose to find it. We have the ability to find it, friend. Keep your head up when you cry Till you get to the other side Thank God that you're still alive So start to live Only good will come of this We knew going into the writing process that this 
would have to be titled, this song would have to be titled, Only Good Will Come of This. And I'd rented a little keyboard for Tori because our piano was in a different um, tuning and we, it was just would have been a debacle to try to uh, tune my guitar to where the piano was and then have that work. So we just maneuvered and uh, I rented her a little keyboard from our local music store in Bozeman called Music Villa and we had the keyboard set up and a couple guitars in the living room in my house in Montana and I remember her sitting down at the keys and she just let out this melody and chord progression and it was like God was in the room. This is one of those songs that just fell right into place and I think Something that we have to remember is that no one can fix us. No one can complete us. We have to do the work. That line, it's an endless bridge you have to walk alone. You know, when I think about that, I think about this, there's this bridge in Montana that was actually washed out when uh, the Yellowstone flooded and it just had so much symbolism to me. And how to get to the other side... You can have your friends and family and your faith supporting you along the way, but you have to take the steps. Only good will come of this Even though you can't see it I know it feels like an endless bridge You gotta walk alone Well, this brings us to the end of this part of our journey together. Your presence through this experience, your support for this story, and your heart for the album has just simply blown me away. I will forever be grateful that we were able to share this time together. Like I've said, I wasn't even sure I would ever be able to tell this story publicly. I wanted to protect those who were involved as much as I could, and I wanted to make sure if I ever did tell it that only good would come of it. And that is truly my hope. And I'm truly hoping it has. This story of mine is filled with love, betrayal, loss, tragedy, and ultimately, a newfound love for myself. An unconditional love for myself. An understanding that as a very flawed and messy human that I can love all the pieces. Heartbreak, emotion, redemption. Your story is yours with your own adventurous details. But the emotions that life throws at us, well, we've all been there in some capacity. So I hope that through these eight songs and eight episodes that you feel more connected to yourself and also to others. Music and storytelling have a way of of doing that, uniting us through our human experience, no matter what our background, how we were raised, or what we've been through. So friend, as we wrap up this part of the journey, I want you to know that maybe, just maybe, you don't have to borrow as much courage today because that courage is now yours. And it's yours to give away, to allow others to borrow for a bit. You are stronger than you think, beautiful and courageous. And your heart is to help others. But make sure you've got your heart for yourself first. So take up your space. You're worth it. Till next time, I'm Stephanie Quayle, and this is the On The Edge podcast. This show is produced by Elizabeth Evans Media Productions. All rights reserved. Even though you can't see it, I know it feels like an endless bridge. Hey, y'all. If you're loving this show, it would be awesome to hear from you. Head to your podcast app, scroll down to where it says ratings and review, and share your thoughts with, well, a rating and a review. Your words might just be what the next person needs to tune in and find the healing they're needing in their life. Only good.